All right, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a star, at the very least, on my combined July and August 2024 reading wrap-up. The reason it's combined is A, I didn't read a huge amount, and B, I've lost track of what I read when. I don't even remember the order in which I read these, I just have a list of books to talk you through. So we're going to bring things back up to date with July and August, and then hopefully as of September and onwards, it'll make a little bit more sense. So, let's get started. Dane reads. All right, so audiobook wise, uh, I started listening to the audiobooks of uh, Andrzej Sapkowski's Hussite trilogy, beginning with Warriors of God, uh, which I gave probably a four out of five to. Uh, and then we had uh, Tower of Fools, which is probably 3.5 out of five, and then Light Perpetual, which was also a 3.5 out of five. I might as well talk about all of these together. All right, I still don't 100% know what a Hussite is. I mean, I, I, they're, they're followers of someone called Huss. And from what I gather, he is kind of um, going against the grain of established organized religion. And so because of that, people were saying he was a heretic. Uh, we have the Hussite Wars, which took place. And uh, Rainavan, uh, his, what's his other name? Rainavan or it was another R. Hang on, I'm gonna have to look this up. Reinmar, I, I got there before I loaded. Reinmar Bialava. Um, uh, yeah, he's, he has two names basically, but he's the same guy. He's kind of like a cross between a physician and a doctor. Um, and he starts off by having, uh, he turns a man into a cuckold by having sex with his wife and then it all kind of goes downhill from there. But he eventually kind of becomes a Hussite. It's basically historical fiction, but with a little smidgen of fantasy thrown in, we have like giants and a little bit of magic. The lines between like magic and science are kind of blurred quite often in this. Um, it's just a decent enough adventure read i'm not gonna lie if it wasn't the fact that it was written by andre sukowski i think after even after the first book well i wouldn't have picked up uh the tower of fools which is the first book right or was warriors of god the first book i've forgotten now yeah yeah the tower of fools was the first one then warriors of god uh then uh, like perpetual um and it was tower of fools which was the best one in my opinion um I read it because he wrote the Witcher books and they are different enough from the Witcher books but also similar enough that if you liked one you'll probably like the other um, but as I say I think if it hadn't have been for the fact that uh, that it was Sapkowski that wrote it and I'm a bit of a completionist I probably wouldn't have picked up the first book and even after enjoying it I probably wouldn't have stuck with it. Um, yeah, here we go. Wikipedia says uh, the events take place in Bohemia and Silesia during the time of the Hussite Wars, which is uh, da, 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 1419 to 1434. So, uh, yeah, but I knew nothing about the Hussite Wars. And even now that I finished, I still don't know very much about the uh, Hussite Wars. I will say of the Hussites, like I'm just looking down the Wikipedia page for it now. And a lot of these were kind of important characters like uh, John Zitzka and uh, Prokop the Great and Prokop the Lesser, uh, both important characters in the novels as well. So it does have like real characters. Yeah. Anyway, all right, then we'll go for The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So I previously read One of Us is Lying and One of Us is Next. Uh, the Cousins is a standalone by her. Basically, these uh, three cousins go back to this like little island resort to uh, confront the past, I guess. Their grandmother uh, has invited them all there and they don't really know why. So they go back to sort of see what's happening. Uh, the grandmother hasn't spoken to any of her kids for years, so they've like never even met her. And it's, you know, it's a YA thriller, I guess you would call it. Um, lots of twists and turns to it. There's a very disturbing scene where one of the cousins hooks up with one of the other cousins. Uh, luckily, they maybe they're not really cousins. In fact, throughout this book, the entire the entire book has like that uh, nothing is as it seems kind of vibe. You never know whether somebody is who they say they are. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Probably a strong four out of five for me. All right, let's do uh, 101 Things to Do Instead of Playing on Your Phone by Ilka Heinemann. So I gave this one like a 3.5 out of five, but it was okay. It was actually a gift from Shay. I think she's probably trying to tell me something. Um, the problem I have with it, I guess, is that I just read through it like a book and really to get the most out of it, obviously you need to go through and do all of the activities that like is uh, that are provided by the author, um, which I, I guess, just didn't do. I mean, a lot of them are like, 
a lot of them are for me they were like work so it was like write an advertising slogan for your favorite hobby and it's like you do realize i'm a professional writer like that is what i do i get paid to do stuff like that i don't want to do it for free as a way to relax i write a newspaper article about something that happened it's like mate i i, I write okay i don't need to sit here and do more of that as a way to relax the whole point it should be something that is away from all of that stuff um but yeah it was it was it was interesting enough bit bit gimmicky but that's the point of books like these okay uh, atom bomb angel by peter james so peter james he's mostly known for writing the roy gray series of crime novels um this is i think his second ever book and it's much more of like a a thriller i guess uh, like an espionage thriller you can tell he was inspired by the james bond novels with this one um very much comes across not that that's necessarily a problem it doesn't really feel derivative which is kind of what i was worrying it might do um i really enjoyed it i actually liked it a lot more than i thought i was going to especially given i'd read uh one of the previous books that features this character max flynn and didn't really get on with that so much i mean it is very dated uh, there's even a bit in it where it references the royal family and it talks about charles and diana and their son because at the time they only had prince william they didn't have uh harry hadn't been born yet um but yeah the idea the atom bomb angel basically there's a terrorist plot to blow up some nuclear power stations and our main character gets sent off to try and get to the bottom of things. So yeah, an interesting read. And also what was really interesting actually was that James mentioned for his research, he contacted like the British Nuclear Authority uh, and their press secretary was a guy you might've heard of by the name of Terence Terry Pratchett. So yeah, that was cool. I, I'd recently read, um, I think in my last wrap up I mentioned I read Terry Pratchett, A Life in Footnotes by Rob Wilkins, who was Pratchett's assistant. And uh, it was really interesting to kind of have read that first because that talks a lot about this stage in Pratchett's life when he worked for the British Nuclear Authority or whatever they're called. So, yeah. All right. Oh, hello. I'm at a weird angle. I can't seem to get this right. OK, some more books for you. Um, well, then I, we have Dr. Seuss's Sleep Book by Dr. Seuss. Uh, this is another one that I read with Shay as a bedtime read uh, to help to get her off to sleep. And yeah, it was pretty fun. Probably like a 3.5 out of 5. It was a reread for me and it's Dr. Seuss, so there's not a huge amount I can tell you about it, you know. Uh, then we have Roald Dahl, a whiz-popping joke book. Now, uh, this is just a joke book aimed at Roald Dahl readers, essentially. Um, a lot of fun, lots of gags in it. Uh, what was the one that stuck with me? There was one that stuck with me and I kept telling... Oh, that was it. Uh, why is it so noisy in the garden? Because Jack and the Beans talk. Um, so lots of jokes along that kind of uh, vein, really. Probably like 3.5 out of 5. It wasn't anything amazing. A lot of the jokes... I mean, it's aimed at kids, so a lot of the jokes were kid jokes, you know? Um, but still, there was that one good one that I have gone on to remember. All right, then we have Even the Stars Look Lonesome. And I'm just going to get my notes for this one because if I try and uh, talk to you about it, I am not going to do my review justice. So I think this one I'm just going to read out from my uh, written reviews. Uh, so this is Maya Angelou, uh, it's non-fiction, and I wrote, Maya Angelou is a cracking author who's got a lot going for her, and her memoirs are arguably even more poignant and culturally important than her poetry. That's not to say that they're easy to read, though. Even The Stars Look Lonesome is almost a hybrid because whilst it does have shades of a memoir, it's also kind of like an essay collection in that it doesn't really flow a linear narrative, follow, sorry, a linear narrative. Instead, she dips in and out of subjects with an ease that I wish I had myself. The result is that it feels like you're sitting beside her somewhere in the sunshine, listening to her chat about some of the standout moments in her life. And when you finish, you'll feel as lonesome as the stars look. So I gave Even The Stars Look Lonesome a four out of five, very solid read. Okay, then we have Keep On Running, and this was by, uh, this was by Phil Hewitt, and basically Hewitt is uh, a marathon runner. Uh, he's actually, he used to be the arts editor at his local newspaper, and they had a place for somebody from the paper to go and do the marathon. And basically their sports editor was so overweight that people worried it might kill him. So Hewitt decided to go on and do it. Uh, he did a little bit of training and um, really enjoyed himself. So he did the London Marathon. And since then he did like 18 marathons or something like that. And this is basically his memoir about running. Um, you're not going to enjoy it unless you're a runner, I don't think. Um, but there was a lot to like about it. Some bits I didn't like so much. It was also kind of dated because it was written before like the modern era of Garmin's and Strava and things like that. 
Um, so he used to have actual like wristbands that he wore on his sleeve that would he would use to kind of figure out his timings and all of this stuff. Um, but yeah, it was pretty interesting nonetheless. I gave it probably a week four out of five. Okay, then we have With These Hands, which was a collection of Pam Air's poetry. Um, probably again a four out of five. I enjoy Pam Air's. I think I've read one or two of these before. It also had some kind of insight into what was behind the poems and, and how they um, were created, which is a lot of fun. I do enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, not too much more to say about that. Then we have Days Like These by Brian Bilston, more poetry. So Bilston is known as the Poet Laureate of Twitter. Uh, obviously now it's X. Actually, I mean, I've seen most of his stuff on Facebook. If you've seen kind of poetry online, you've probably seen him. He does a lot of fun stuff. A lot of his poems go kind of viral. And the idea behind Days Like These, it's his various poems collected with one poem per day throughout the year, um, tying in with what's going on at, you know, at the time sort of thing. So there's, you know, Christmas poems, Easter poems, but some of them are more random. It's like Day of the Midwife poems or, or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I liked some, didn't like others. Probably a week four out of five for me. I do like Bilston's work. Um, yeah, he's popular for a reason, you know? Okay, then we have Stop Them Dead by Peter James. And I believe this is the one with the dogs, is it? Let's see. It's one of the, the latest ones. So it's book number 19. Uh, yeah, so this one goes into the world of illegal dog breeding. Basically, a uh, family buys a dog. The dog has rabies and it bites a little girl. And... Um, yeah, there's this risk of rabies becoming kind of endemic again in the UK, whereas at the moment it has been wiped out in the UK, though not around the world. Um, and yeah, there's this sort of crime ring behind it, bringing in these illegal dogs into the country, stealing them as well and selling them at a profit. It's actually set kind of against the backdrop of COVID-19, uh, which is part of the reason for it. Like dog prices went up because everybody wanted a dog all of a sudden because they were all at home. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you, you're kind of faced as an author with whether to talk about the pandemic or not. I think James did uh, dealt with it pretty well. Um, I assume kind of the books after this are just going to move on to after the pandemic. Um, but yeah, it was well dealt with, very well researched story as well, very moving. Uh, it will make you angry at illegal dog breeders though. But yes, solid four out of five. And finally, we have A Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankl. So this is non-fiction. Uh, Frankl is uh, a former, he was a Holocaust survivor and a psychotherapist. He's a, a, a founder and proponent of logotherapy, which I'm not going to try and explain to you because I won't do justice to it. Um, but basically, the idea is that we inherently try and find meaning. And he found this even when he was in a concentration camp. Uh, you could he could tell when people were had given up because they would take their cigarettes and they'd smoke them whereas you could use them as a kind of a form of currency and trade them for soup and stuff um but even in the concentration camp people were trying to make music or you know they would celebrate birthdays in the, the best ways that they could they would tell jokes uh, that sort of thing even though it's quite obviously quite a dark humor um so it's a very weird book it's half um survival memoir half explanation of logotherapy um I think it's very culturally important anyway. I gave it a four out of five. I actually really enjoyed the logotherapy stuff as well. Um, although obviously I did, I was, I, can't, I don't know if you can say you enjoy stuff about the, the Holocaust, but I was fascinated by it anyway. Um, so I would recommend it. So there we have it. Those are all of the books that I read in July and August of 2024. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.